my name is Bia Wang. Uh, I'm from Brookhaven National Lab. It's one of the DOE labs. Uh, so today, uh, I'm going to talk about redoubling profiler investigations into uh, MCS characteristics <coughs> and are used in uh, model evaluations. So first of all, I'd like to thank all my uh, co-authors for their contributions to this work. So why uh, we care about MCS systems? MCS is regular the global energy through the extensive cloud <coughs> coverage and exchange of latent heat. <coughs> so the goal of CMDV project that I'm working on now uh, is try to improve the MCS uh, representation of MCS systems in the climate models. So uh, because right now we don't do a very good job with uh, GCMs, and uh, even for the evaluation part, a lot of our efforts had to uh, exclusive. Uh, have been exclusive to the precipitation maps, but uh, that could be limited uh, at some point because uh, there are a lot of different ways that you can get to the same precipitation field. Another big challenge here is that uh, we don't have a lot of observations, and uh, there are only a few aircraft studies that are available and can be used for the community. Uh, so we need to come up with new observations that can be used uh, to give us more information of uh, MCS systems and um, to better constrain our modeling efforts. Uh, also, uh, we need to be more creative to do that. So uh, ARM, as a program, is trying to respond to the needs for uh, MCS observations, especially for uh, vertical velocity. And there are two campaign data sets that are available uh, and are used in our project. One is MC3E happening in Oklahoma in 2011. So, maybe you're familiar with, um, <coughs> and also the continuous SGP data set. And another one is uh, Go Amazon 2014 and 15 campaign uh, happened in the Amazon basin. So we got hit by a lot of different types of convection during this two, two year campaign period. And uh, 60 of them are organized MCS systems. And there have been a lot of initial efforts uh, related to this uh, data sets and you can see uh, the references here. So these are the two data sets that I tend to focus on in our MCS studies here. Um, I will first give you a basic overview of the observations that I have and uh, the contrast between different ARM data sets. So uh, what we are really focusing on is the redoubling profiler measurements. So most of you may be familiar with redoubling profiler for retrieving the horizontal winds. But here, ARM reconfigured this redoubling profiler to be a vertically pointing precipitation radar. As you can see on the red panel here, it's a time uh, height image of retrieved vertical velocity uh, based on the methods that we have been uh, publishing in the past. And uh, I, I then I, I will try to contrast uh, the properties of uh, SGP and Amazon MCS systems for a certain number of events. So we first uh, decided these, uh, those are the MCS systems by looking at the scanning radar <coughs> images. And then uh, we normalized these selected cases by doing the composite. So there are many ways to do that. Uh, one example from Shira Neely paper is that uh, they, they did a composite based on the Copu properties. As you can see uh, on this plot, is a drop of theta E value. Uh, during the storm passage, uh, pass over that site. And we adopted this method, uh, but using the maximum rainfall rate instead to make things easier. And uh, we found that the, the results uh, from both methods are very uh, similar. So I will show you a uh, composite rainfall rate for both uh, Amazon in green and SGP in yellow. So you can see they are on top of each other. So you have a very similar total precipitation properties for both sides. So this, this is the thing that I want you to keep in mind. And then what I'm showing here uh, is also the composite properties for Amazon site on the left panel and SGP on the right. Uh, so let's start from the very basic refractivity field first. It's on the top panel. So remember that I showed you uh, they have a very similar total precipitation uh, properties. So it's not surprising to us that you see a very similar uh, look in the uh, refractivity field here. You have this very strong, consistent convective curve, and also the broader trailing stratum area, 
with bright band signature on the uh, free freezing level. And also they have very similar cloud top height. But dynamically, you do see a lot of differences between uh, those systems. For Amazon, you tend to see this wide, consistent updraft plume always at the, uh, uh, the convective course, where in SGP, you don't really see that. So it, it doesn't necessarily mean that uh, the SGP storms are not stronger. Uh, it's just they are not happening always at the same time at the same locations. So when you get to 95% of vertical velocity, you tend to see more uh, intense updraft course happen in uh, SGP sites. So this uh, kind of speaking back to the beginning part of that, this talk um, is that uh, even though you have very similar precipitation fields, uh, the dynamic part of the systems uh, could be very different. So uh, here's another way of thinking about <coughs> things and also proves you that the SGP storms are actually stronger. Uh, because the way uh, that we are collecting data with Redarvin Profiler is a single space point uh, that being hit. So, uh, we, so we need to think about a statistical way uh, of uh, uh, comparing <coughs> the observations, uh, of comparing the <coughs> data size. So here uh, we plotted the mean and 95% vertical uh, velocity profile as a function of uh, echo top height. So the echo top height is defined as the height of the 10 dBz echo here. And um, we kind of like this way of plotting things is because it's more instructive to see the behavior of different uh, parts of that storm. So when you get to the deeper part of the storm, meaning that you have uh, larger echo top heights, you tend to see a stronger vertical air motion as expected. Um, much stronger for SGP set here compared to the Amazon. Also, um, you have a very uh, different downdraft properties between the two. You see there's a shallower, weaker downdraft for Amazon and <coughs> much stronger and deeper for SGP sites, uh, which could extend even to six kilometer here. So these are the things that we are learning from the observations. And as an initial thought, we want to use the thing that uh, we get here from the observational set uh, use, using for the um, model evaluation work. So one of the things that we started with uh, is try to look at the likelihood of seeing updraft and downdraft, uh, uh, downdraft as a function of uh, low level, uh, sorry, as a function of uh, low level uh, refractivity here. So we have a couple of uh, observational data sets as a multi-doppler radar retrieval in red and radar wind profiler uh, in yellow. So they are not perfect. Uh, you see discrepancies between them. But basically, they, show, they are showing us the same thing. Um, as up to 35 dBz, you see an increasing likelihood of seeing an updraft as a, uh, in the whole columns, which makes sense. Uh, however, when you look at the model outputs here, they are at a completely uh, different places. And, um, but they both slope up at the same time, which actually is pretty good and uh, also very promising. So um, <coughs> when plotting things in a <coughs> constrained space like this, uh, when you see a differences here between observation <coughs> and simulations, <coughs> the problem could come from two parts, the dynamic part or <coughs> microphysics or both. So I will just give you some details of the model simulations that we are using here is the uh, LAM one month long run during uh, MC3E campaign period over uh, SGP site. And horizontal resolution here is 0.8 kilometer. And we have a couple of MCS cases identified during this time window. So we did a simulation with three uh, different microphysical schemes here. Uh, the Morrison and P3 new microphysical scheme with one ice category and P3 with two uh, ice categories and to see the improvements uh, of the uh, microphysics here. So um, because it's a one month long run, so we need to uh, do a statistical studies and not just focusing on a singular event. So remember, we have two problems here, the dynamic and the refractivity. Let's start from the uh, sim sim simple part is the, uh, is the refractivity part of that problem. The similar type of plot here, uh, 
the refractivity profiles as a function of <coughs> echo top height for observations on the left panel and for the simulations on the right with two different microphysical schemes. So statistically, um, we uh, the model tend to overestimate uh, the refractivity. I think it's a common issue with the models here. But structurally, with the P3 microphysical scheme and the deeper convective curve here, you, uh, you do see a slightly improvement. And the refractivity tend to be better distributed uh, in height, if you look at the observations. But still, it's too strong here. So even though we thought uh, it could be a problem of a forward radar simulator, but uh, um, we should be able to do a better job, uh, to do a good job with the uh, um, that room part with the simulator. So clearly here, it's not the only problem. And then uh, let's look at the dynamic part of that problem. So the same plot that you saw earlier uh, in the observational part, uh, part that I presented and the model simulations on the bottom panel. So the biggest difference here you, see, uh, you, you may notice is this, um, is this, this part. So uh, focus on the deeper part of that storm uh, where the model tends to overemphasize the updraft uh, intensities uh, when you compare to the observations. And uh, the more concerning thing that we found is that there are very little evidence of downdraft properties uh, predicted by the model. Uh, when you compare with this stronger and deeper <coughs> updrafts in the observations. So it's not only because the models simulate too weak uh, downdraft, it's also the likelihood of seeing downdraft in the whole column is just uh, so much weaker in those uh, simulations. As you can see this blue lines here is the percentage of uh, downdraft um, predicted by the model and compared to this <coughs> observation that you, we have. So could improving microphysical schemes help a little bit for this situation or not? Uh, so we plotted the P3 new microphysical scheme uh, here. So we do see a slightly difference. Maybe you can see clearly. But uh, we do have a slightly improvements here for the downdraft in intensities. And also the peak of the updraft tend to shift oh, upward a little bit. Um, it's still too strong. The, updraft intensity. So uh, it does have an impact here, seems to be favorable. So to summarize, uh, from the observational part, the arm emphasized the new observational solutions for deep convection vertical velocities. And we have two campaign data sets that are available, can be used, to the, can be used for the pure observational studies and also the uh, model evaluation work. And from the modeling part, the models tend to overemphasize the refractivity and updraft intensity. And imagine you have a very strong updraft, you get a uh, very larger particles and then gives you a high refractivity. And if you can weaken a little bit your updraft and get, get more evaporation coolings, get rid of some particles, maybe you potentially weaken your uh, updraft. And uh, as here in this uh, space uh, we present, you saw earlier, if you think the refractivity is off by 5 dBz and everything will shift over this way, so actually we'll get a pretty good uh, behavior in this uh, space. And the biggest concern that we have is the uh, downdraft properties. The model just uh, underestimate the uh, downdraft intensity and uh, probability of uh, the whole column. So uh, maybe increasing, uh, maybe improving the uh, downdraft property will potentially have an impact on the updraft part as well. So uh, that's all. What I had, thank you. <coughs> Thanks a lot. Today, uh, questions, please. Yeah. Your MCS uh, stimulation is a real data based or just idealized?